Good afternoon, everybody. This is Garden Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Today, uh, for a meal, I am going to prepare uh, what is called tofu walnut balls with um, a tofu uh, stroganoff that goes with it. Um, I'll be showing you how I make those. And also, I will be um, baking a pumpkin as well to have as a squash dish and also um, the leftover um, squash from that uh, will be used to make dog treats. But I'll deal with that on a later video. So today I just wanted to show you how I make uh, tofu walnut balls. And these are based off a recipe found in the 7 Secrets um, recipe book. And I will post a uh, copy uh, a link on where you can find that um, in the description box below. So here we go. The tofu walnut balls have um, uh, quick oats, um, it has uh, breadcrumbs, and I make my own usually. Uh, my food processor broke the other week, so um, I basically just tore up, I know two cups is about four slices of bread, so I just uh, roughly tore up uh, four slices of, of bread. So we'll add that to the bowl <clears throat> as well. And then um, your seasonings for this are going to be garlic powder, onion powder, and um, Italian seasoning. We'll put that in the bowl. <clears throat> and then um, an important part of it, of course, is the tofu. Now, the tofu that you need for um, this this recipe here is the kind that you find in your refrigerated section. It's um, in a box and it's got water in it. Um, so you uh, purchase that one and you cut it uh, open and drain the water out. See if you can get it. They're packaged pretty well, so trying to open them can be a bear. Okay, now I can't really show you this because I don't have a way to tilt my camera, but there's uh, a brick of tofu, and I'll show you that in just a minute. That's just soaking in water, and that's how they preserve it in this little box, and it lasts a while in here. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to move this bowl out of the way here. And the tofu we're going to put in a blender. Right, so I'll show you what this brick looks like when I get it out of here. All right. So it's just a big block of tofu. Just crumble it up a little bit, put it in the blender. This helps it um, mix better. And then to that, you're going to add um, half a cup of water. And then um, two tablespoons of soy sauce. And then also, I add, um, this is bouillon paste that I get. It's a vegetable-based bouillon. There are no animal products in this um, meal. It's strictly uh, vegan. So add that to that as well. So I'll mix in. We're just going to blend this up a little bit. Alright, and we're just going to let that sit there. And then another thing um, is the walnuts, and these are just um, regular walnuts, uh, raw walnuts that you buy. And um, you need them chopped finely. Again, since my food processor broke, I, I have to go about the old-fashioned way. So what I do is I take two resealable bags and just put the walnuts in one and then put it again in another. And seal it up. Try to get the air out. And then take a trusty old rolling pin and just crush off that one. The reason why you have two resealable bags is one undoubtedly is going to break under all this pressure, so two of them keep the mess to a minimum. Alright, here we go. 
moved a little bit, so we'll fix ya. Okay, there we go. So anyways, <clears throat> so now we have crushed walnuts. We'll add that to our bowl. Simple, simple, simple. And then we're gonna slice up some onions. Mm. Nothing too fancy. Just get them nice and small because some people don't like eating chunks of onion. Tofu mixture. And just pour it on in there. Stir it together. What's also great about this recipe is it's very forgiving. So if you feel it's too wet, add a few more oats to it or breadcrumbs or whatever. If you feel it's too dry, just add a little bit more water. I think I'll actually have to add some oats. So excuse me while I'll go get some. Just add Add about a half a cup more. <clears throat> you want it the consistency of regular meat balls. And so if you've ever dealt with, with actual hamburger or turkey or whatever, and you make actual meat balls, you kind of know what that looks like. If not, you just want something that's going to clump together real nicely. And as it cooks, really nice texture. So there's that. So this is what it looks like. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it on a baking sheet. This has already been pre-sprayed with um, some non-vegetable uh, oil spray, excuse me. And we're just going to roll. I'm going to take a little scoop here and we're going to roll them into balls. I put on gloves just because it's a little bit easier to clean up between this product, this recipe, and then the next one. I see what I need in just a minute. It's a really fun recipe. It's a favorite among my family. I end up making this at least once a week if I remember to, because that's just how much my family likes that. So I'm just roughly forming balls on here. <clears throat> You can spend the time and make them look pretty if you want, or just keep them rough looking. It's all up to you. It all tastes the same either way. Mm. What we usually do with this is I'll cook it and we serve it over uh, white egg noodles. You could also serve it over rice if you wanted to. Or it's just great on its own. You don't have to serve it over anything. You can just serve it as is. It's really good the next day. It goes well as leftovers. And it freezes very well too. So you can make a large batch of this and just freeze it ahead of time. And then uh, when you're in the mood for it, you just Hold out, let it thaw in the refrigerator for overnight. And just warm them up in the oven, or if you don't mind using a microwave, you can do that. 
I know a lot of people are against the whole microwave thing. Easy clean up. My hands are not dirty and gummy from all that, so really easy to clean up. So there you have it. Let me get this back out of the way. So, there's those. And you cook them in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour. You kind of gotta kind of watch them when they start getting brown and um, nice and golden looking. And they, they're probably done. Um, if you want to be extra sure that they're done, you can after 45 minutes or so, you can turn off the oven and just let them rest in there um, with the door closed for another 15 minutes or so. And uh, that'll make sure that they're they're done for you. So I'm going to go put these in the oven. And this is what they look like. And now uh, they're done. nice when you open them up they're nice and moist inside like a, a meatball should be they're very delicious <clears throat> now to that like i said we're going to make a tofu stroganoff gravy it's really delicious um again it's vegan so there's no animal products at all in this um and the great thing about the, the combining these two recipes is you don't have to wash so many dishes. The blender that we just used, you don't have to wash it out. You can just mix everything in that and uh, it'll be just fine. So we're going to go ahead and do that. This calls for um, cashews. And the thing about cashews is that uh, you want to make sure that they blend up really, really well first. Um, if you add too much water, or not enough water, they won't blend up very well. And so you don't end up with a nice, smooth consistency. So this is uh, one cup of, of raw cashews. You can generally find this in the produce section of um, larger stores or a health food store. You can find raw cashews. Just put those in there. And then the recipe calls for a cup of water to be added to this. And I don't add a cup right off the bat. I add about a quarter of a cup um, pulse it a little bit, add a little bit more until it starts blending and getting really smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and start that process now. Another thing that's important about uh, cashews and making it cream is you have to move it around. Sometimes the pieces get stuck around the blades or stuck up on the sides and don't get blended. So take your time. Make sure you use your spatula for what it's intended for. Just keep going. It's getting there. Still a little bit chunky, but not too bad. And so to help this out a little bit, to give it a, more, a little more bulk, because there's not a lot in here, so it makes it somewhat difficult for the blender to do its job very well, is we're going to go ahead and add the tofu that goes in this one. And the tofu that's used in this sauce is a, um, a, a softer tofu. It's found in box form that's shelf stable. There's, um, there's no water in this. And um, it's just tofu in a box that's heat sealed. And this is the kind you use for sauces and things. 
there is a big difference in, in how they turn out. You can use the refrigerated kind to make sauces, but you cannot use the boss kind to make things like scrambled tofu and stuff. The texture is a lot different and it just doesn't turn out. So you gotta watch, 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 watch which tofu you're grabbing for which recipe use. Learn from trial and error. I've made many errors, trust me. And I still make many errors today. That's how I learned. All right, so cut that open and pop that in there. And then to that, we're also going to add our seasonings and things. The seasonings for this is um, onion powder and then yeast flakes. These are nutritional yeast flakes. These are not what you use to bake bread. Completely different nutritional yeast flakes. Again, you'll find these um, in a health food store, a health food section of a large superstore if you have one. So I'll put those in there. And then um, some soy sauce. And again, I have my bouillon paste. I find that sometimes my gravy turns out to be a little thinner than I'd like it. It doesn't come up to a nice thick consistency. So I've found through trial and error to add a, a thickening agent on top of that. And I use what's called clear gel. It's like cornstarch, um, but it's something you can find in the health food stores. It's a little bit different than regular cornstarch. You can use regular cornstarch if you want, though. It's just whatever preference. So add that there. And then we're going to add the rest of our cup of water. This is still the first cup we started with. Um, I've only used about half a cup in here so far. I'm going to add the rest now. And we're going to go ahead and blend. Scraping down the sides of the container. So looking a lot like stroganoff, especially with the uh, vegetable bouillon that I use. It really gives it a nice dark color, like a beef stroganoff color. So it is really pretty. <coughs> And to that, uh, you can add two more cups of water. That's uh, how to do it in the blender because the blender is just about full of all the ingredients that we put in there. So I add about um, a half a cup to a cup in the blender and then I'll add the rest uh, to the pan when I put it in the pan. I use a nice size saucepan for this. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Oh, it's a three quart. Three quart saucepan. Heavy bottom. One thing you gotta do with this as with any gravy is you have to watch it so it doesn't uh, stick to the bottom and burn. That's a pain. You spend all this time making this beautiful gravy and then it burns. Just pour it in there. See that nice rich color? From the dark vegetable bouillon and the soy sauce, it gives it its rich, rich color. And then just add another cup of water. Mm. Then you're going to set this on the stove and cook it over medium heat and stir it with a spoon or a whisk um, until it gets nice and thick, and then turn off the heat and take it off the heat. 
and I'll get uh, thicker as it sits, just like in the other gravy. So I'm going to move this out of the way. So that is the tofu walnut balls, the tofu stroganoff gravy. And like I said, I'm going to be cutting up the pumpkin here. I'm going to move stuff out of the way. Room, room, got to have room. Have a bowl. And what's good about cooking is when you empty bowls that you use for your ingredients, you can use them as a waste bowl. Yay, we love less dishes, less work, right? Okay. So, this is a big pumpkin. It's um, actually a small pumpkin, but it's a big pie pumpkin that I grew in my own garden. This is organic. I grow organically in my garden. So, um, I'm going to take this big old knife and we're going to try to cut into it. And uh, with pumpkins or any other hard shelled squash, you just have to take your time and be careful. Because even if you have the sharpest knife in the world, one slip and you can lose a finger or something worse. Just take your time and cut it open. No hurry. There's nothing in the world worth losing fingers over. <sighs> That one cut pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and cut it again since it is a good size. I'm going to, just going to cut this side again. And then just take your time. No hurry. All right. So it's kind of cut into quarters, as you can see. I'm not perfect at cutting things into corners. And it doesn't matter for cooking. I'm not cooking in a five-star restaurant. I'm cooking for my family. All right, there we go. So, pumpkin's all cut up. Now, I misplaced my... Give me one second, I misplaced something. When things happen that you don't expect, you just roll with it, right? All right, so we're just going to scoop out the innards. And for those of you who love pumpkin seeds, you can go ahead and separate the pumpkin seeds from the, um, the, the, me the mess of this. And then roast them later. Um, I usually roast pumpkin seeds at 350 for about uh, 10 minutes after I have cleaned them up, of course, and I soak them in a little bit of a salt water solution. Saltiness, depending on how salty you like your uh, pumpkin seeds. So we're just going to clean this up. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to get most of the, the gunk out of here. And all this waste here, if you've been watching my videos, you know where it goes. It goes to my chickens. They either eat it or they scratch it into the, the dirt and stuff and make good compost for me. So I can use it in my garden next year. So. And I do eat chicken eggs on occasion. I'm... I sometimes eat vegan, but most generally I call myself a lacto-ovo vegetarian, meaning that I do use milk products and egg products myself. Um, the rest of my family, they're omnivores. They like their meat, but if I can cook a good vegetarian meal, they do enjoy it. It's very important for us wives and homemakers to do is to make sure that when we make meals for our families, that there's something that can be enjoyed. So, I don't know any husband who doesn't want to come home to a nice home cooked decent meal and be able to enjoy it after a hard day's work. Or uh, ladies if their husbands are the ones who stay home. You know, they just enjoy being able to do that. And then of course being able to have the leftovers to take with their lunches next day for work. A little piece of home helps the work day go by a lot faster. 
Three down, one more to go. I hope you enjoy watching my videos. Um, I'm just getting started making them, so they are a little raw and unedited and quirky and things. But um, I feel like I should share my journey with you, things that I'm learning about taking care of my body, taking care of my family in a healthier way, and um, how to make good, nutritious food in a simple way. Some people think that good food has to be expensive and use all sorts of fancy ingredients, and that's that's not so. I mean, some of the ingredients I do use are they're different. And you have to go to a special place to find them, but um, they're used in almost any vegetarian cooking anyway. So it's not like it's you know, Greek. <clears throat> and if you have any questions about anything that I use in my cooking or anything that I mentioned, you can go ahead and um, shoot me an email, shoot me a comment below at the video, find me on my Facebook page, Instagram me, um, you know, go to my website. I have a website as well, gardengensjourney.com. So there's a plethora of ways if you can get, get a hold of me if you have a question or a comment, and I would love to hear from you. All right, so there we go. Boring part out of the way. Or kids, especially young kids, might find that fun. All right, so what I'm going to do, and they're probably not all going to fit, is I have a large uh, glass rectangular pan. I think this one's like 11 by 15. It's not the 13 by 9. That's the next size up. So I'm going to take my um, pumpkins that I've cleaned out. And don't worry about the stem or anything because this is all going to come off eventually anyway. So just let it be. As long as it's washed, there's no dirt. Just leave it alone. So anyways, put these in here, cut side down. Let's see if I can get them all in here. Might have to do some finagling. And that's okay. There we go. All right, so I have them all in there. Now you're gonna add about uh, a cup to two cups of water. So it fills um, the pan about an inch up. And then you're gonna cover it with um, some aluminum foil. Um, you're gonna cover it so the water stays in there and it's going to steam bake these. And I cook these for about 45 minutes to an hour um, or until when you poke the, uh, the rind with a fork it goes straight through. I mean just like a hot knife and butter. And then when that's done you take them out, set them aside, let them cool down because you don't want to burn yourself. And then you'll just scoop the, the flesh right out of the, the rind. It comes out really well. And then um, you know, do whatever you do with the rind, but again, I give it to my chickens. And then you can use that as pumpkin puree for any type of dish, whether it's just to have as a squash, because it is a squash. You know, it's, uh, people think, oh, you only make pumpkin pie out of it. But it's a squash, so you can use it in any dish that calls for a squash. You can make pumpkin bread, um, pumpkin pie, pumpkin cheesecake. Um, you know, like I said, I'm going to use some of it to make pumpkin peanut butter dog biscuits for my dogs. Um, it's really healthy um, dog treat um, that doesn't have all the fillers and all the artificial ingredients and preservatives and yada, yada, yada. But anyways, so again, just cover it with tin foil. Put it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour or until you can slide a fork right through it. And then take it out, let it cool, scoop it out. You're done. So I hope you've been enjoying watching me today as I show you how to prepare tofu walnut balls, tofu stroganoff gravy, and how to prepare pumpkins for uh, baking in the oven. Thank you so much for watching. May your day be richly blessed. This is Garden Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Bye-bye now.